Okay, so recently I've added CO2 to my 40 breeder planted tank. Um, I decided to make this video uh, to just kind of show you guys from kind of a beginner's perspective or newbie, because um, I've never done CO2. It's the first time I've ever done it. Um, biggest reason why I did it is because I am running a Beamswork DA F spec light um, without a dimmer and on a 40 breeder anyway it has shown to be a little bit too much light um, for a non-CO2 tank in order to balance properly in my opinion in my experience um, so here we go with uh, the CO2 I believe this was the day after I added it um, this was after a water change which is uh, big reason why there's bubbles stuck to everything. Um, you can see the Amazon sword there has leaves that are damaged. Even the new growth you can see there in the back uh, has holes in it. I got quite a bit of green spot algae on my plants. Even the Lud Ludwigia there has um, a decent amount of green spot algae. My crypts, of course, they're a little bit slower growing, but being that they're down low, they kind of uh, escape the brunt of it. Uh, got a female ram there, but here's my S repens, um, that also has quite a bit of green spot algae on it. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of me trying to chronicle my adventure, at least in the beginning. Um, you know, I decided to zoom in on some animals here. There's the ghost shrimp, the male ram, uh... My pH naturally sits at about 7.2 to 7.4 without CO2 injection. Um, a lot of people say that this is a little high for rams. Um, not going to say that they're wrong, but so far, I mean, I've had these rams for six or seven months now, and um, they've been doing really well. Uh, well, I mean, the golds are kind of new, but uh, the blue rams I've had for a while. The tetras and everything have done really well, even at that pH. Um, naturally, when you add CO2 to the tank, it's going to lower your pH as it dissolves in the water. Um, so it, it, I guess you could say it kind of mimics where they naturally would come from uh, with the lower pH. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, articles out there written about injecting CO2 that claim that that pH swing doesn't matter too much so long as it doesn't dip too low. Um, there we have the wind love java fern that uh, propagated. Um, the Ludwigia, you know, some damaged leaves. Uh, it's pretty horrendous. Uh, so, I mean, rather than getting a dimmer, I opted for CO2 because, I mean, who wouldn't like plants to grow a little bit better, a little bit more, fuller, healthier, everything like that. Um, I was already doing weekly 50% water changes on this tank, so my water change routine is not going to have to change, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, using a Python water changer, uh, it makes it so ridiculously easy, especially on this size of a tank anyway. Um, I could see how people might find it to be kind of a pain you know if you have a 120 150 gallon tank 200 gallon tank doing 50 percent on that i mean that that is a lot of water but uh, on a 40 gallon breeder it's uh it's really easy actually um so yeah here we have my regulator and solenoid everything is from co2 art as far as that goes uh, i got the tank at a local hydroponics store the tubing is uh, Aquatex, I'm sorry. Uh, I also have the Aquatex brass uh, check valve. And the diffuser that I'm using is uh, by Nylock G, a um, little bazooka one rated up to, I think, a 50 or 60 gallon tank, something like that. Um, and back there, you can see the Ozlot sword has a uh, considerable new growth on it. I trimmed the repens, uh, the, Lud the Ludwigia and both the S repens, 
very aggressively to try and get rid of as much algae as I could. There's still a little bit left, some remnants. Uh, but you can see here that the new growth on the Ludwigia has zero algae on it. All the new growth from the sword, after trimming away the damaged leaves, is near perfect. Uh, you got one leaf right there, kind of in the center to the left. Um, that has a little bit of damage on it. And then one I believe I tore. Um, funny thing about that Anubius is I tried to apply Excel directly to it in order to kill the green spot algae. And it melted the leaves. So I trimmed the leaves off until that new one pops up. Then I'll probably trim the stems down to the rhizome as well. You can see the Windlove Java Fern has propagated a lot now compared to last time. Um, I got rid of that taller Anubius. I just really didn't like the way it looked. There was a leaf that I knocked off in my last water change. I guess I forgot to grab it. Uh, there's the CO2 art. I slightly increased the bubble count. Um, I don't want to increase it too quickly too fast because I have it turning on two hours before the lights come on and turning off an hour before the lights go off. So. I don't want to gas my fish before the lights come on and the plants can start producing O2. Um, so yeah, that is the result so far.